The more you self-improve, the lonelier you will become. Guaranteed. 99% of society has settled. Anything challenging, uncomfortable, or slightly inconvenient will be avoided. Society lives for instant gratification. When they feel like watching a distracting show, they watch a distracting show. When society feels like eating ice cream, society goes ahead and eats ice cream. They have no self-control and they'll give in to every single temptation and desire when hit with a sudden urge. Name one person society admires, applauded, or remembered throughout human history who gave in to comfortability and settling. Absolutely zero. None. There is no story and there will never be a story revisited of somebody who gave in to instant gratification and comfortability, who took the easy route, who took the easy path. There's no name that exists. Comfortability is spiritual death. The more you indulge in instant gratificational things, temptations, desires, sudden urges, the weaker your character will be, the weaker your self-identity will be, the weaker your confidence will be, the weaker your spirit will be, the weaker your mindset will be, and the softer the mind, the softer the spirit, the harder the falls. When you have continually practiced living a cozy existence and your weak mindset is conditioned to living in a nice, comfortable, cozy environment where everything is peaches and cream, sunshine and rainbows, when you constantly do that to yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, when that storm comes, which it will for all of us, when that test, when those trials and tribulations come upon you, you will be destroyed. And I'm not God, so I can't say for certain if you will make it through that moment. But if you do go into one of these storms unprepared, it's going to be a lot worse. And the only thing you can do is pray to God, because he is the only person who can save you. And you see it time and time again in society. Yes, a lot of these people are still living, but they're dead inside from some hardship, from some experience, from some storm that knocked them flat. And yes, they're still alive. They're still kicking around, but they're walking with the same issues, with the same problem from 2016 because the storm affected them that bad. They're still complaining about something from their past. They're caught up in the past because that uncomfortability, that trial, that tribulation hit them so hard that they are living it for the rest of their life because they are used to a comfortable, cozy existence. That uncomfortability, that trial, that tribulation affected them that bad. And a lot of people don't bounce back from something like that. They practice for half their lives living a nice, cozy existence and when that adversity came, it knocked them out for good. But when you take the disciplined, uncomfortable, suffering path, you are preparing for life's challenges, for life's tests, because we know life is challenging. We know there's things that are going to pop up that are going to test our might, test our will, test our character, things that will put us through the ringer. These things are inevitable for all of us and none of us can escape the storms of life. So wouldn't you want to prepare for these types of events? Wouldn't you want to be in a constant state of hardship, testing yourself, suffering, expanding, and growing your mind? By doing uncomfortable tasks every single day, expanding your mind, rejecting comfortability, rejecting mediocrity, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, going for a run that exhausts yourself and makes your spirit quiver, jumping into a cold shower, doing things that are difficult. Building up this discipline is building that mental fortitude. It's putting iron around your mind and building it up so when these trials, when these tests come, you're ready. Mother, I prepared for this. This is how I live. This is nothing new. You may get a thrill out of it. You may just see it as a challenge, as God testing you, or something that you need to overcome instead of, I've been living a cozy existence and this, this is crazy. This shouldn't be in my life. Oh my God. And it takes you out. You want your mind to be well equipped for the adversities of life because that's the only way you can rise up and become something. The unfortunate side of life, the more you rise up, the more people will try to cut you down so they can feel good about themselves because literally 99% of society, they don't want to change. They don't want to grow. They want to stay in this comfortable stagnant state. So when they see you growing, evolving, doing better, all of this, if you have a nice, weak, comfortable mind, you will be plowed over easily. Simple. But do not be discouraged because when you have a Teflon mindset and you stand 10 toes down on what you believe in and you don't hinder your beliefs or your actions to what other people say, eventually some people will be inspired and they will follow suit and you'll start to influence your environment and change it. It may be a fight at first because a lot of people are stuck in their ways and when they see you changing, obviously they don't want to change innately because it's uncomfortable. But if you keep fighting, you keep pushing for a better life continually, that's when you'll have breakthroughs. Living in that comfortable state on a day-to-day -day basis 
is spiritual death. You are building up a weak mindset. The more comfort you develop inside of your mind and inside of your life, the more the fear will also develop inside of your mind because you're used to the comfortable and fear, well, that's uncomfortable. The unknown, that's uncomfortable. Doing anything else that sways away from your comfortable existence is uncomfortable. When you trap yourself in this comfortable zone, you can't become anything else because, well, being fat is comfortable. Being a loser is comfortable. Keeping these bad habits is comfortable. Eating junk food is comfortable. Being distracted on your phone all day is comfortable. Comfortability is your demise. And guess what's on the other side of comfortability? The uncomfortable, obviously. And what is in the uncomfortable? Your full potential. Everything you could ever become. The most jacked version of yourself? Well, that's uncomfortable. Eating healthier to benefit your health? Well, that's uncomfortable. Waking up early? Well, that's uncomfortable. Going for runs? Well, that's uncomfortable. Literally doing anything to advance or better your life is going to be uncomfortable. And the stronger that parasite of comfortability builds inside of your mind, the more that uncomfortability will start to haunt you. Changing yourself, bettering yourself, doing something brand new, the harder it will be. And the thing that lies in uncomfortability, struggle, and suffering is the greatest, most fulfilled version of yourself. And when you transfer your life into this disciplined, uncomfortable direction, and you take action improving your quality of life and just yourself in general, the lonelier you will become. Because 99% of society has plateaued, meaning they will never evolve, change, grow, or elevate from their current state. They're on autopilot, stuck in the same routine, the same excuses, hovering in one place. Because changing growth is uncomfortable, so they don't do that. Comfortability in the path of least resistance is so easy, so they do that. And they will have every excuse in the book to keep that comfortability alive, so they don't have to better themselves, throw themselves in anything uncomfortable, so they don't have to change. Those excuses are the fronts they put up. Oh, well, this and that, and I don't gotta do anything. I don't gotta change, adapt, grow, expand, be uncomfortable because of this. I'm lazy. I got excuses for you. I got this. I got that. They'll come up with whatever. Like, if you bring up, hey, man, why don't you go to the gym? Well, after work, I'm just extremely tired. Okay, why are you tired? Oh, I don't know, man. Maybe you got a shit diet. You're eating at 7-Eleven each and every single day. Disgusting ass wings with a smoothie and your body is depleted because it's not meant to run off sugar and disgusting food. Okay, yeah, maybe if I fix my diet, I'd have more energy. Okay, what are you doing at nighttime? Well, I'm just smoking weed, playing games, doing these things. Okay, how about you take care of your mind? Maybe meditate. Give yourself some energy by cleansing your mind, taking care of your psyche, doing something. There's absolutely no excuse. When I was working 12-hour days in the pipeline, guess what was super easy for me to do after work? More work. Why is that? Because I was in a continual cycle of work. So work was the easiest thing to do. Being lazy was not an option option because I was just constantly working. So guess what I was doing after work? More work because I was working all day. So what do I do when I get off work? More freaking work. I was doing videos. I was going to the gym each and every single day and I'll go to bed at 1 a.m. because I wanted to get these things done. I wanted to shoot the videos. I wanted to go to the gym. So I'll go to bed at 1 a.m. and I'd wake up at 7, go to work, come back at 7 p.m. I would do videos and I would go to the gym. There's no excuse. If you don't want something and you don't want to change and you want to be mediocre and you have settled in life, you will come up with an excuse guarantee because when you really want something, it doesn't matter if you're working 16 hour days. You'd be like, you know what? It's time to just turn crazy. If I want to do this, well then let's just work another two hours, flip it. And then you would go down that road. There's literally no excuse. If you want something out of life, you will find that change inside of yourself to go and get it because it's something you want. So that choice, I don't care what it is. It's always up to you. If you want to make an excuse, then go ahead. That's your life, but there's no excuse. And the reason you have excuses is because you're used to comfortability. You want to keep that comfortability that mediocrity inside of your life, that known factor, you don't want to see the other side because either you're afraid, you're lazy, and you don't want to go there. And when you're constantly growing, expanding, elevating, and God's continually molding you, well, your presence alone will start to cast judgment without even having to say a word. They will feel the need to depart, hate, or judge. And these people love comfortability. So if they see you continually working on yourself, bettering yourself, it's a reflection of what they're not doing. So they're going to resort to try to cut you down, hate on you, judge you, try to point something out because they want to cling to that comfortability. They don't want to change. They don't want to suffer. They don't want to put in the work that you were putting in. This 
subconsciously want you to change because your growth makes them feel inadequate and uncomfortable. And these people cling to comfortability with everything they have. And when they see you progressing, when they see you leveling up, when they see you working on yourself and doing more to improve your life every single time they see you, it's a reflection of what they're not doing and it makes them uncomfortable. They hate uncomfortability and they don't want to change themselves. They don't take it as inspiration. They take it as, I need to cut this guy down. I need to judge him. I need to hate on him. I need to talk I need to do these things because I'm not willing to put in the work. I don't want to change myself. So I'm going to be a sideline hater and talk shit because I don't want to change. I don't want to do that. I don't want to put myself through that. So the best thing I can do is just talk shit. So they result in trying to cut you down so they don't have to change. They want to make you change to their mediocrity, to their comfortability, to make themselves feel good. And the more belief you have in yourself, the more you develop yourself and grow, the more likely you will move towards being alone. Because people will turn into doubtful stumbling blocks who feel the need to cut you down. Because they are protecting mediocrity, old beliefs, and comfortability. And instead of climbing up to the light with you and bettering themselves, they want to stay and defend that depression, that shit miserable life. They'll cling on to defending the depression. They'll cling on to defending their life and they don't want to change it. They don't want to do anything to crawl to that light. They want to stay there, which makes no sense at all. It's like, hey man, this is how you get out of that slump. Oh no, I just want to, I just want to sit here in this darkness. I want to suffer and I just want to be a victim. That's all I want to be. Well, here's some options. If you bettered yourself, you'd probably be more fulfilled. You feel better about yourself, more happy because you're actually taking steps to better. No, I just, I, you're wrong. You don't even know what it's like to be here. Okay, well come and move. Let me move you out. No, because you don't even know what it's like to be here. Okay, well, let me help change. Let me help move. No, because you don't even know what it's like. Okay, well, then see ya. The more obsessed, passionate, and dedicated you are to your craft or progressing in life, the crazier, more misunderstood, and alienated you will be. It's either you walk alone to protect your vision, spirit, and mind, or fit in and join spiritual death. The more you progress in going down the path that God has designed for you, the more you leap in that direction of just building yourself up, the more likely you will lean in the direction of just being alone until you find a like-minded individual. Because if you want to do even more progression and you want to continually move forward, the more departed from society you become, the less you care about the BS opinions, the casting of stones, and the more you will lean into your own growth to continue to evolve, to continue to expand, to continue to grow, because you ain't fixated on anything else besides yourself. And that is the best road. Because this society has been conditioned by comfortability only project settling and facing the known aspects of life. Oh, we gotta play it safe. You gotta play it safe. Nothing spectacular has happened from playing it safe. Besides spiritual death and being trapped inside of your own head, craving more for the rest of your existence. So when you tap into that more, walk alone and feed that voice because they will starve it. And that concludes this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. And I know there's a power that sent me. Got here for the Vice City. I'm not afraid. I know that he and me. Dancing like David. <laughs> so I just hit the gritty.